We are Jacob and Anna White. We are carpenters from Alaska. We've helped millions of people build their own furniture through our plans and website. But now, we are going beyond that. We are going to show you how to build yourself a house, tiny style. In this video series, we'll show you step by step how to go from a trailer to a beautiful finished home. Make sure you subscribe and follow along. Thanks for tuning in to our video last week on the tiny house build. We are listening and we'll be happy to do a video on how we selected a trailer in one of our next videos. Each week we're going to take just a quick second to answer some of your comments from the previous week's video. So one of the questions that came up was, if your project isn't square, how do you square it up? You just have you know, your rectangle and you'll take a diagonal measurement from the two opposite corners. And those diagonals need to match. If they don't match, just go to the longer diagonal and then push those two corners together until they do match. All right, this week it's wall framing time. Let's do it. Before you start building your walls on your trailer, it's very important to level your trailer. And we did this by cutting some blocks and using a transit and basically leveled the trailer because it'll save a lot of headaches in the end and you always wanna start with a level building. This tiny house is built with just four walls. The two side walls we built first, and they were a little bit more complicated because we had to deal with wheel wells. Um, how we dealt with this is we just put a header right over the wheel well, gave a little bit of room for movement and insulating over the wheel well. There's quite a few windows and doors on these walls because they're the long walls. So we had to build quite a few headers. They were a little bit more complicated as well because we had the dormer on the back part of the wall. How we solved this was we just made the wall taller at the back and shorter at the front. So it's kind of built in, all built in at one. I'll be sharing on my blog um, the full plans for these walls so that you can download those and use the exact diagrams that we use when framing the walls just to make your life simpler, um, including a cut list. So you could actually cut all of your boards first and then just go right onto assembly. So once Anna got done with the plans in SketchUp, we went ahead and cut the top and bottom plates and we went ahead and cut all the, the studs, the cripplers, the kings, the jacks. Anyway, we got it all pre-cut. You take the top and bottom plates and we did 24 on center. You could do 16, but we did 24 to save weight in the tiny house. So you mark out your stud placements and your doors and your windows on the top and bottom plates. And then when you go to assemble it, you have those marks already ready to go, so you can just nail it together. So in our tiny house, we went ahead and used two by fours. We were building a house, most people go with two by sixes, but we did it for weight and we spray foam insulation. So the insulation is such a small space, um, it's gonna be easy to heat. And then by going with a two by four wall instead of a two by six wall, we actually gained eight extra square feet, which is huge in this tiny house. When we went ahead and assembled these walls, it got a little tricky because in a normal build, you just have a flat floor to deal with. Well, on a trailer, you don't, you have wheel wells. So we wound up blocking with some two by sixes above the wheel wells, and then we framed this wall up on the floor just like that above the wheel wells, just like you typically would, but we did it with raised platform. On these side walls, one of the other tricky things is there's a lot of windows and doors. So it's really important to do a good job on the windows and doors because you got some movement, right, in their opening. So we start out by making a header. The header is always two by boards with half inch plywood sandwiched in the middle to get your three and a half inch width to match your two by four wall framing. The type of board that you use, whether it's a two by four, two by six, two by eight, even two by 10, two by 12, is depends on how long your span is and then snow loads. So what you can do is check span tables in your local area to find out what type of header you're using. Then a couple of other elements in your openings are you wanna make sure that you have jack studs that are placed underneath the header so that your header is sitting on something instead of like attached like this where it's just screws, that's not gonna work. And then you also wanna keep on patterns. So above your doors and then above your windows and below your windows, you wanna make sure that you're keep your pattern for your plywood. All right, so once we got the wall framed and squared, um, then you can go ahead and attach your plywood. Now, I like attaching the plywood, the first row anyway. As long as it's not a huge wall, it's very easy to do. And the way to do this is square your wall up, and then you can attach your first row of plywood on it. Now, we left four and a quarter, I believe, and we did this so we could tie the sheeting on the bottom to the floor. So the reason for not sheeting the whole wall is it's a lot lighter to stand and you get 
a square wall just by putting a first row of sheet up. We also had to cut around the wheel wells just for the plywood because we plywood it all the way down and it would cover the wheel wells. Um, that was just a matter of setting the circular saw and cutting it out. Before you stand the wall, there's a thing called sill seal and all that does is it seals the bottom plate to the floor um, plywood. So staple it down there, get it stood, and you should have a line chalked on the inside to know exactly where that wall is supposed to be. Once you get it in place and put the wall, then you can go ahead and nail the bottom plate down to the floor. First wall is up. The second wall was a bit more challenging due to the fact that um, we couldn't utilize the whole trailer for making the wall. So, and it had a lot more openings and it was a little more uh, complicated than that to frame, but all in all, it only took a few hours to frame it. It's quite a challenge to get the second wall stood. It was a matter of not just standing the wall, but we actually had to pick the wall up and pull it towards us and, and then push it up to try to get it on the trailer. Once we got that second wall up and braced off, it's time to build those end walls. This was a huge step. So the end walls, they were a piece of cake. Just a matter of uh, following the plans they animated and they were so light, we didn't put plywood on the bottom. So just get them done and throw them on the trailer and put them in place. Well, those end walls, the plywood sheeting needs to cover the end of the side wall as well. So we chose not to plywood them and then plywood them in place so we could cover that corner joint up. What you'll do is, just like you have a top plate on the wall, you'll have another top plate on top of that but they overlap the walls. So it staggers the seam and it really ties everything in at the top. Really important not to forget this step. So we're ready to, to put the rest of the plywood on. We used half inch CDX plywood. Start it off again and stagger your plywood and just go right up the wall. The 24 inch on centers make it really easy to put sheeting on. A quick tip that he's taught me is you want to just plywood right over your windows and doors. Don't try to like scab pieces in. The easy way to cut them out is just to go inside the building, drill holes through the plywood in the corners, and then go to the back to the outside of the building and chalk a line between the dots. Just connect the dots and then you can just take a circular saw and then cut on those chalk lines. Really simple, easy way to cut out your windows and doors. The chainsaw works too, we didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> we left out some sheeting on the gable ends and we'll tie that in later when we go ahead and put the roof on this place. The walls are done, um, off to roofing and get that roof put on. It's always my favorite part, the roof framing, so you don't want to miss that. So make sure to stay tuned and check in next Friday. So we'll see you next Friday.